Now, I would like to welcome a distinguished personality who has an insightful, brilliant, and bounteous soul, who has worked that one extra mile to serve our nation. He is the executive chairman of SCIENT. So let us welcome our chief guest of the day, Dr. BVR Mohan Reddy, to enlighten us with a few words of wisdom. Please, sir. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, Mrs. Uh, Sunita Rao, uh, Principal uh, Mrs. Uh, Renu uh, Gehlawad, the Vice Principal, uh, teachers, parents, my colleague uh, from CII who is also with us, uh, Mr. Subhajit uh, Saha, and most importantly, my dear uh, children. A very good morning to uh, all of you and uh, a very happy um, Republic Day. 71 years have gone by. This is the second, sec, 71 years have gone by. This is the se 72nd year that we are entering uh, since we built our own uh, constitution. There were enormous amount of hardships that our fathers and forefathers went through to get this freedom to all of us. We were a country which were ruled by foreigners. It meant number of sacrifices, sacrifices in terms of uh, their own uh, careers, sacrifices with their own lives. Some Several people died in the struggle to get us independence. And what are we? We are all children of the post-independent era, post-Republic uh, era. Even I was born past Republic. So we all have the great benefit at this point of time of enjoying freedom, enjoying equity, and enjoying future. So let's for a moment remember all those people and express our gratitude to say that we owe them a lot. Let me move on and then talk about what I think about present and what I see as the future. Last one year was extremely difficult time for every one of us. So it's said in um, uh, history that there are some of these black swan events as they're called. Children, I know uh, some of you recognize what a black swan would mean. It's a very rare bird. You very rarely see it. And so also, is what we are going through as a current crisis is very rare, one of its kind. We don't have, um, uh, am I audible? I just want to recheck that. I am, thank you. So we're going through a black swan event at this point of time, which is very rare. And the second thing that we have seen is that black swan events have an extremely uh, bad implications in every sector of the society. And third, of course, people think that there are some people who will come back and tell you that we knew this was coming. So therefore, there is a fairly serious challenge that we've gone through in 2020. Parts of it are flowing into 2021. In terms of impacting lives, in India, we lost something in the range of about 159,000, which is about 1.59 lakh people to the pandemic enormous amount of loss to our livelihood. The GDP degrew uh, for a couple of quarters fairly steeply. We think it's coming back. Hopefully we'll end the year by about minus 8% or so. But most importantly, that we've also had challenges with learning. I certainly feel sad that many of you feel that you missed the school. You were not in uh, Delhi Public School, uh, Nacharam, for almost six to nine months, I'm sure, or even longer. I'm not, uh, uh, we varied from school to school, or some of you are still not there in the school too. But that is how life is. So how do you face life in such situations? There are two things I uh, uh, fairly well documented, and I believe in it very strongly. So let me share with you. How we face this is, we need to understand what reality is. 
reality is there's a crisis a crisis that was not made by man it was not made by god it make it's it's a it's a confluence of number of things which created a crisis of this nature so the reality is we do have a crisis we have to feel the reality but steadfastly you need to be optimistic this is not end of life this is not end of us what will happen is that all of us should believe very optimistically that we will come out stronger from this crisis as it ends and the good news now is the hope is in the horizon vaccine has come and certainly what we are seeing is the impact of the crisis in terms of uh, life especially is far lower in countries like ours so as a result of that i think we all need to be now optimistic that it's not going to be too long we don't know when i won't put a date on it but we are certainly seeing slowly the recovery is happening but in this crisis a couple of more things we all have to recognize and you're feeling it first one is that there was a fairly strong acceleration in terms of digital transformation what are we doing today i am talking to you on a digital platform i wish i came to your school i wish i was there in the middle of you i wish uh, i took that salute i so proudly i would have done that with your ncc cadets but can i say therefore and i feel very sad no this is reality of life a reality of life is it's become digital and so also you look at it further the uh, several other places the digitization has happened platform is one how is your learning going on i'm sure right now sunita ma'am and renu ma'am and the rest of the faculty that we have are working very hard to teach you online teaching therefore they don't want you to lose an academic year they don't want you to be idle at home they're caring for you they're looking after you and as a result of that we now moved into a mode called e learning and so also if you look at it you're watching movies on the uh, uh, platforms that's basically again digital or you're shopping more on retail on the um, uh, 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 on the platforms on digital platforms and i'm sure you're watching your parents right now doing a fairly large amount of governmental transactions paying their um, uh, municipal taxes paying their electricity bill paying their water bills or you know getting um, some of the certificates all of them are all happening in a virtual digital mode so what have we seen in this one year is what we keep saying is an acceleration of digital mode but has it why is has it happened because we did not have a necessity some ways covid helped us in terms of speeding this process but one thing we have to recognize is the underlying technologies that were there for making this digital possible were already there we did not uh, uh, discover new technologies in the pandemic period of last 12 months approximately all were there but we speeded up their implementation and as a result of that we got a lot of benefits to come by what we're seeing at this point of time is this technology implementation transformation is not happening to a few areas that we talked about it's happening everywhere if you look at digitization is a part and parcel of every industry today uh, it's happening in india it's happening in somewhere else in the world even agriculturists use technology like drones thereafter there are um, uh, technologies like artificial intelligence to make sure they understand what is the health of the crop in which part of the crop there is a pest for him to send one more drone thereafter to just spray pesticide in that particular area so what we have seen historically for mankind is every time a technology came into play there was always benefits that accrue to the mankind 
they were benefits that came to every human uh, 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 kind across the world. We saw the econo economic upliftment. We also saw more amount of comforts that came in. People keep getting very scared saying this technology is being coming everywhere. Will I have enough jobs? What do I do? But I give very classic example. I have two photographs with me, which were taken in the year. Uh, the first one was taken in 1905, I believe. Uh, and where was this taken? This was taken in New York on Fifth Avenue from a vantage point on the fifth avenue the street they take the street picture what did it have it have all of them the street was full of horse drawn carts and there was one small tiny car in one uh, end from the same vantage point 13 years later they took the same picture what did they find they found that the whole street was full of carts except for one horse drawn carriage. That does not mean we killed all the horses or all the horsemen disappeared. What happened? People reskilled themselves. So as these new technologies come in, one has to reskill themselves to make sure that the opportunities are there. So therefore, what we are coming down to is, what has life taught us? Technology cannot be stopped. Technology will keep coming. And technology, when it starts moving at an accelerated pace, as we are seeing right now, what we find is that there are challenges and there are opportunities. So what do you, how do you face these challenges? Only one thing I keep saying, learning and learning and learning. That's what all of you have to do. I'm not asking you to go and climb Mount Everest in the next 10 minutes. I'm only saying that change your attitude. Learning does not tire you, does not make you sick. It makes you more knowledgeable. You will become smarter. And here is the catch that we have is now learning is also possible anytime, anywhere, from any place that you have, there's no more barriers of that nature. I used to go to IIT Kanpur as a student. I wanted to learn something about mechanical engineering, heat transfer. So what would I do? I would go to the library. I have a fairly nice library behind me all right now. But those days I used to go to the library, search for a book. I wouldn't find the book. And so what do I do next? Go to the librarian, ask her about where is the book? And she used to say, it's just been given out to somebody. So which obviously means that I thought for 15 days I have to wait before I can get the book. But then she would then smile at me and say, Mr. Reddy, there are two people ahead of you, which then means I would take another four more weeks. This total of six weeks would be gone before I get the book. Look at the transformation that has happened to all of you right now. In my uh, generation, this was in 1970s, when I was at IIT Kanpur, what I had to do is that I had to wait for six weeks, even if I had an intent to learn. Whereas what is the luxury of life of yours? I want to learn something, including mine. I want to learn right now. I can just go ahead, open the internet, or I open my Kindle, or I open my books and I learn what it is. So you have ocean of knowledge in front of you at your fingertips. Actually, you just need to manipulate your keyboard. So the big message I have to all my young friends today is learning is something which we have to make it a part and parcel of our lives. Yet another thing that will happen that's happening today, we're experiencing it is not learning is not one time experience. Just getting a degree is not good enough. Learning has to be lifelong. So make that a habit all the time. In interest of disclosure, I can tell you I'm 70 years old. And I keep telling people, I, I still learn every day because I don't think tomorrow is my end. 
I eat so well that I think today is the end. Either choices to food I eat. So eat well, keep yourself safe, but learn all the time. You should never give that up. My last message is that while this is all important, to me, success will come to us. Money will come to us. Fame will come to us. But for all these things to happen, never give up your values. You have to, as a children, you have to learn it. As adults, you have to make sure that it does not change at all. Your values in terms of fairness, integrity, trust, respect, transparency, never compromise on this. My teacher taught me once and it always rings in my ear. And my teacher told me that if you lose your money, you will always get it back. If you lose your health, it is difficult to get it back, but you can still get it back. If you lose your values, you will never get them back. So to me, values are very important. Please, please make sure learning and values go along with each other. As I said, where I am in my life, I see you as my future. I see those very bright eyes on the screen and the smiling faces. So those shining eyes and bright uh, and the smiling faces the, uh, make me feel that you are, my future, who is you, is in very safe hands. God bless you and Jai Hind.